Good afternoon and welcome once again to In the Hot Seat with Deborah Fenella and... Tony Go. good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now, unfortunately, we're running a little bit late this afternoon because we've had a few technical problems in the studio. So, so sorry that we're running a little bit behind. But we're really excited and blessed to have In the Hot Seat today all the way across to Memphis, Tennessee, celebrity singer, songwriter, author, entertainer Liz Presley. Good afternoon Liz. Hopefully the internet's working okay. How are you there Liz? How are you turning? Good Hi. afternoon Liz. Yes last. we finally got into At last. <laughs> I think like take three isn't it? Bless you. So it's... sorry Liz. We've had a few problems haven't we in the studio today with um, it, the internet unfortunately. So, so sorry. Thank you so much for bearing with us bless you. It's okay. Sometimes my dad did 60 takes so I wouldn't worry about it. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think he's actually um, linking in with us from he heaven above, actually, don't you? Oh, definitely. <laughs> yes, There's no doubt about that. I feel that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I think yeah. he definitely is. Now, yes. Liz, um, please tell our viewers a little bit about yourself, please. Oh, my name is uh, Liz Presley, Elaine Elizabeth Presley. So Liz Presley is really a nickname for Elizabeth and a uh, we, um, basically, I just tried to use my whole name one time, which was Elaine Elizabeth Presley. But then somebody came up and said, well, we'll just use Liz Presley. It's a lot easier to, to use, a lot easier for album covers. And my name again. So, um, you know, so now I'm just Liz Presley. But my actual name is Elaine Elizabeth Presley. And I was born in Essex, England. And I came over to America in 1984. And uh, then, of course, I came home to Graceland much later on. And here I am, all these years later, 2021. You say you come from Essex, England, yeah. is that right? Mm, cool. Well, well yeah. yeah well, my DNA... Sorry? I was going to ask you... Oh, um... I had a, yeah, I had a fantastic childhood. It was really great. Yeah. Yeah. And what was the happiest times, do you think, you can recall that you'd always think of? I had lots of happy times because yeah, um, yeah. I was raised on the lucky enough to be raised on a farm. And so we used to like bale hay, go pea picking, potato picking, ride our bikes, play practical jokes, go to the sweet shop, stuff like that. Going to see the uh, Cliff Richard concert was really great in Braintree. That was wonderful. I was also really? a Cliff, Cliff Richard fan as well. And uh, just, doing, me, just doing fun things really in Coggershaw, you know. Yeah. That's you also um, used to have picking strawberries as well, didn't you, Liz? And you used to bring I, home loads of strawberries for your mum. Strawberry, strawberries and blackberries and uh, gooseberries and apples and pears and and everything, really, you know. Yeah. Did you used to help your mum do the baking when you brought all of those wonderful fruits home? Yes, she did. She did do it. Hold on one second, sorry. Where's that gone? Hold on. Don't even know where my phone is. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So um, yeah, I did all that, and uh, my mother used to do the baking and stuff like that, and I used to enjoy those pies and things like that. So that was really great. Exciting. What occupation is, did your dad and your mum actually do throughout your childhood? Because I believe that your your dad was actually um, in the military himself, wasn't he? Yes, my. Um, my father, the one I was raised with, was in the military, and uh, he was in the army, and uh, so he was in the army. And when I was young, we lived in a little house near the army barracks, and it was like no running water and stuff like that. So you have like, you know, you used to have the your baths in the little metal tub when I was a baby, and uh, go out, and I, when I as I got older, I used to go out to the outhouse, and then later on. Um, we were moved to uh, to Coggershaw and uh, this beautiful home was built for us, you know, um, a three bedroom, beautiful home, brand new for us to live in. And uh, I lived in there until I left. You know, it sounded here. really idyllic um, after reading your book as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I can actually relate to you um, being, you know, it, 
forces child. So my husband used to be in the RAF as a fireman and yeah. we used to live in a forces home as well. And mm-hmm. I say the forces home was actually in Colchester, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Like you explained yeah. in your book. Yeah, Mark's just down the road of Mark's Tay was where we lived in that one particular house. And um, when they lived on the barracks, of course, I was probably wasn't even born then. Um, but when I was born, we lived into just outside of Mark's Tay, which was, you know, is all army, as you know, for Colchester. And uh, then later on, I said, we moved to to uh, Cockershaw and that beautiful home was built for us, which was really nice. So then I had run, we had running water and things like that and bathrooms. I can hardly hear you there, Liz, actually. Um, hopefully the viewers can actually hear you as well. I don't know if um, there's a problem in the studio with the actual sound. I'm so sorry. Is That's there a okay. problem in the studio with the sound? So sorry. Had a bit of a problem there. Can you actually still hear us, Liz? I can hear you wonderfully, yeah. You can hear us. You, you yes. sound a little bit quieter, actually. I can hardly um, hear you. So I don't know if you turn your sound down, bless you. Is your My phone down? My sound is um is fine. So look here. I don't think it's actually a problem in the studio. Oh, okay. I'm gonna check the, the, the mic here. Audio. Yeah, my audio seems to be fine. Yeah. So sorry. It's okay. <clears throat> So getting back to your childhood uh, mm-hmm. and growing up on the farm, it must have been a very happy time in your life during that time of growing up in the farm. But what occupation did your mum do, Liz? Did your mum actually work as well? Because I, I know um, mm-hmm. later on it, your dad did work very hard on the farm and used to enjoy working on the farm with your brother and your sister. Did, did yeah. your mum actually work as well, Liz? It, she, it was actually a confusing time because um, even though I was happy and riding my bike and working I was also working on the farm as well even as a young child and then working in the woods as well down the street from that um it was also very confusing because as a child even though I was actually very happy and very bouncy I was really oblivious to things that are going on you know I didn't really not like children today where they know what's going on and know their mum and dad and stuff like that I realized now I was oblivious and my mother didn't work um she worked in the Red Cross which is when they're in the army and stuff like that but she didn't work. She looked after the household, and you know, and um, and then of course that father went to work on the farm. But it was really, you know, really think you don't think at the time because I, th- I thought they were my real parents at the time, and so I just took that situation as what it was like for everybody. But it wasn't. I realised now. So I was kind of oblivious to things, and it was kind of like a distant thing. I was very distant to the father because you know he turned out not to be my father. And also I realized now I was also distant to my mother, even though I loved her very deeply. I see now it was a distant, still a distant relationship, a disconnected, connected so sorry, relationship. Yes, I can't actually hear you. I don't know if it's the actual uh, mic on that here is actually playing up. I can hardly hear you. Um, studio, mm-hmm. can you turn up the sound, please? Because I can hardly hear Liz as she's talking. So sorry, Liz. That's the game. So I can hardly hear you. Very distant in the background. Yes, I don't know if it's the actual studio I've turned down the actual sounds. Mm-hmm. Can you actually hear us clearly, Les? Yeah, I can hear you. I can, I can hear you. I can hear so you fine. Sorry. Yeah, I can hear you. It fine. must be the internet or something. I say. Yeah. I don't know. No. The, the mic's actually on as well. The microphone's on. Yes. So I don't think it's actually the internet. Mm-hmm. So, so getting back to your, your childhood, Lynn, Liz, it wasn't always easy, was it? You know, as no. a, a child back in those times and also working on the farm and supporting the family and everything, wasn't it? It wasn't always easy. No, it was definitely, I was living, we were kind of living really in semi-poverty, really, in a lot of ways. But it was still okay. You know, we're still happy and bouncy and stuff like that. But of course, there were lots of problems going on. But when you're a child, you don't know about those problems yeah. really you just want to live and be a child and you kind of bump, bump into these problems and stuff but I realize now I've gone you know gone through my entire journey that really my childhood was not normal not really and um, it was kind of distant and lost and um, and I was just making myself happy and bouncy and doing things to make myself you know okay and I didn't recognize the distance really between the father in the beginning 
and I didn't even recognize distance in my mother, even though sometimes I slightly did, but I didn't even know what that was because I thought they were my real parents. I thought that's the way I acted in, in families, but I saw other families were slightly different than ours. And um, so now I fully realize that it was distant. It wasn't normal, um, but I made it kind of normal, you know, by being happy and bouncing myself. And, uh, and that continued up until I left. And I, and then when my father died in 1977, I became very lost. And uh, my real father died. I became very lost, even though I didn't know he was my father. And that was a very confusing time. And so I kind of went on a journey through life until I found my way back home. You real certainly home. did, didn't you? Because, say, on reading your book, going back to, like, mm. Dennis Mauer, who you thought was yeah. your father back then, being yeah. obviously a, a military man, he was very strict. He was very rigid, wasn't he? And he gave you a bit of a mm. hard time. And your mum yeah. felt the need to protect you and support you and look after you. But you always yeah. had this longing that you didn't belong in that family. And they always yeah. say that we have this deep longing within ourselves when we know something isn't right. And, and you knew, didn't you, from a very early age that even yeah. though you believed that they were your family, you knew deep down that you never really felt part of that family yeah. and almost like separate to that family, didn't you? Yes, and not only, yeah, everything you just said is totally correct. I didn't feel like I was part of the family, even though I was part of the family, but then I did feel part of the family because I thought that's how it has to be. So it's very, very confusing like that. And, um, you know, as I grew up, you know, it was an amazing journey of discovery and it was a very dark journey and a very emotional journey of searching and not knowing what you're looking for and you're just actually searching and walking in darkness. It's a bit really like imagine walking down the street and you decide to just try to find what you're looking for, but you don't know what it is. And so you just go on this journey to try to find you or whatever it is you're trying to find within yourself. And it was a wonderful moment, you know, uh, later on, even though it was still, don't get me wrong, it's a continuous, it was a, well, it was a continuous, confusing journey. Um, it really was for a very, very long time, even up until probably 2020. You know, because you're constantly discovering, even though you see the DNA and you see that family's DNA and you see they don't match you as being mum and dad and stuff like that. You have to go for those emotions as well. Like, oh, my goodness, they really were not my parents. You know, I was right. And then, of course, you have to go for the thing that you're right about your, you know, what you're thinking, you know, because everybody, when you come home to Graceland, they're, they're screaming and saying, oh, so you're crazy. You used to love to sing and to dance. And at one point, Dennis, you, you know, mentioned about Elvis. And yeah. he refused to book singing lessons for you because you had that natural talent from a child like your amazing dad did. And you yeah. were singing and dance. And it was really yeah. sad that he didn't, you know, support you because I'm a singer as well as yourself. And mm. it's, it, it, yeah. it, it does really, you know, upset me to feel that you didn't get that support. But you do now because you do amazing work performing and yeah. following the footsteps of your dad Elvis Presley because I say he was such an amazing earth angel because yeah. I, I truly believe that he is an earth angel and, and now he's in heaven and he's watching over you and you are yeah. an earth angel as well of your music and everything that you share and it's not been an easy journey for you because you've gone through so so much and it's not until reading your book it, I, I realized how much you've gone through in your life and, and I think you're one remarkable inspirational amazing lady and I feel so blessed to read your book Liz because you never give up no matter what's thrown at you mm -hmm. you pick yourself up and dust yourself back down regardless yeah. of what Dennis put you through in your, your childhood and then after your Dennis and Mildred split up and your mm -hmm. mum then at the time went to live with her mum didn't she and yes. Dennis moved somebody else in yes. and then your, your path got really difficult after then didn't it because you then went to Ball's Court and that was a difficult time you went through a lot of bullying but yeah. your faith in God carried you through because you would regularly go to church this wouldn't you yes my my faith in God and my faith in what I was searching for you know and then when I found her out who I was I was so free you know so even though I had a really tough time in the beginning when I found out who I was and up until that time, it was, you know, it was nowhere near as hard as what I had already gone through. It was like a, I was free. But now I just had to, you know, and now I just had to. I never tried to, like, claim to be me. I just was me. And so if it was a, you're claiming to be you, I don't claim to be me. I'm me. I came home and I'm just me. I'm home as me. So, yeah, 
it's nowhere near as hard now, no matter how hard it is as it was trying to find out who I was. And it must have been such a huge relief after everything that you went through to, yeah. to finally find, you know, your true identity. And, and like, yeah. you know, throughout the book, you explained you always had this sort of strong connection with Elvis because you even rang him up when you was 13, didn't you, on the telephone? I and did. he was concerned mm -hmm. about his health. Yeah. And he said to you, live your life and be free and don't worry. And no matter what was thrown at you, good or bad, that mm -hmm. carried through and gave you that strength, didn't yeah. it? You know, during the hardest times, even when you was homeless, it, mm -hmm. it, you always knew that your dad was watching over you as your guardian angel, which I truly believe that he was and still is yeah. today. He definitely, he definitely was. And there's lots of things that have happened since I've been home to show that he was, you know. And um, it's no way, you, there's no way I could have survived all the things I survived without some help from above, you know. No. Um, it would be impossible. You know, basically, I'll give you an example, when I was 17 years old and I was walking the streets of London where everybody was either doing prostitution or drugs, the people that were on the streets, I would just kind of walk past them and walk through that, you know. And even then, I've worked quite. And you were protected through that time in your life. Mm -hmm. And yeah. also, you did help a lot of people, Liz, didn't you? Because you came up with a scheme um, yeah. to help yeah. those that didn't have any money to buy their mm -hmm. own home. Yeah. And, and I used to work in estate agents. Yeah. So, you know, I fully understand all about mortgages mm -hmm. and things like that because I used to work at Nationwide Building Society. But you also yeah. be, used to be a mortgage advisor. You would mm -hmm. support people to get on that property ladder. You, you invented mm -hmm. this scheme. To mm -hmm. help loads of people, you, say mm -hmm. you're such a remarkable lady, to actually afford to buy their house where they would put literally 500 pounds down, yeah. and then they would have to pay the rest, you know, after three years a percentage, mm -hmm. didn't you? Yes, and what actually about when I was in London, I was you know working in Trust House 40 Hotel. In fact, they looked after me for, for seven years, and my dad actually was head of course doing business with Trust House 40, but I did not know that. And um, so they looked after me for seven years. They gave me everything. I lived in a five-star hotel and I worked in different hotels they owned. And then, of course, I had a business. And so this businessman helped me as well who on Gray's Inn Road. He said, listen, he says, you can't afford anything. He said, but I'll let you use my address. And I'll give you some advice. And the advice he gave me, he said, listen, he said, you're never going to make any money trying to make money. He said, you've got to learn how to create it. He said, within 100 yards of here, you could make a million dollars. You just got to figure out how. He said, and I, and I designed the mortgage advisory service, and that became the very first mortgage advisory service in, in the world. And then later on, it wasn't because, you, know, was, uh, you know, I didn't really think about it. I then started seeing all these mortgage advisory services, and I, thought, and I realized that much later on, oh, my goodness, I designed the first one of them. And I had a write-up in the paper, too, about that in my company at the time. And so I'm quite proud of that, you know. No. You did, Liz, and you, you're very clever because mm -hmm. you, you also used to um, sell signs, didn't you, for businesses. You're multi-talented, uh, and yeah. even when you didn't have much money in your pocket, mm -hmm. you, you would, again, come up with a plan, and then next minute, and have a business adventure, and mm -hmm. you always fell back on your feet, and that shows the mm -hmm. pure strength and determination within you mm -hmm. that you never gave up. Yeah, this, you know, and that, that's but, where I, I find you truly remarkably inspirational um, yeah. because of everything that you've gone through. And you've got mm -hmm. such a heart of gold. And you also do support many charities as well, yeah. don't you? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. That's right. And um, would have helped lots of people. In fact, that's the basis. You know, I would like to say that to the world, because I think that is the most important thing for people to understand. Ever since I was born, you know, the basis of my whole entire life and being, especially now I've found myself and I know who I am, is giving to other people. When I sing on stage, I concentrate on giving to people. I don't do it for me. I do it because I want to see them smile. I want to change lives. When I give money, you know, and things like that, sometimes I give all my money, you know, I don't have any left sometimes. You know, you're not, a very humble lady, Liz, aren't you? Well, it's not that I want to any credit for that. What I'm saying is, though, my passion is not to seek fame. My passion is to help people. And I realized when I realized who I was later on, I said to myself, wow, I can help a lot more people now. You know, so it hurts me sometimes when people get in my way of that because they do when you're me or someone, you know, someone like me. And so they, taken away from I feel they're taken away from people when they do that so I my goal is to continuously help people throughout my life in fact I can't really stop it because it's born within inside me 
you know i can't stop helping people that's but what you i also do. support don't you the anti-bullying campaign yeah. because you yeah. know i'm very much against bullying and unfortunately there is a lot of people in the world that do bully and it's unacceptable and yeah. there's no need for it at the end of the day and it kindness is the way forward to be kind to one another and as i've always brought my children up if you haven't got anything nice to say keep your opinions to yourself because words do actually hurt but as Paul McKenna normally says, when someone's been unkind to you, secretly they're inspired by you and wish they were more like you. But yeah. unfortunately, words do actually hurt, Liz. And, and you, you come mm. under scrutiny and attack, as I've read in your book, by a lot of people. And it mm. just breaks my heart, to be honest. Mm. That people can be yeah. so cruel cool and so nasty and there's no need for it. it. It needs to stop. In order to bring positive change mm. in this world, we need to be kind to one another and support one another. Because yeah. everyone's got their journey. And some mm. people's journeys are harder than others. And it's supporting that person through their journey and being compassionate for what they've gone through. Yeah. Do you agree, Liz? I do. In actual fact, what you just mentioned is extremely emotional for me because I was really fighting in the beginning saying, you know, because the first four years home, you know, with my real dad, I was Presley. It was an attack like you would never believe. And so... I come up with the term um, haters are killers, they stop the hate. But people don't realize when somebody's at home getting drunk and on behind a computer attacking somebody vulnerable, to me, I was not as vulnerable as that, even though I am vulnerable because I have this inner strength of my family, which I'm lucky. But, you know, a lot of them are vulnerable and they kill themselves. So haters are killers, they stop the hate. And when Ben died, it devastated me so greatly that, that... it's just heartbreaking isn't it you know my children have gone through bullying um throughout yeah, childhood and, yeah, and it, it, yeah. there's just no need for it to be honest i've gone through bullying myself where people bullied me and it's, yeah. it's about standing up to the bullies and sort of saying it's time for change it's yeah, time indeed. for positive change and mm. kindness is the way forward uh, yeah. and nine times out of ten it's sometimes it's other people's ego and lack of understanding but yeah. when they just set out to sabotage or hurt somebody else. But how mm -hmm. are we going to change this world if we don't do the inner work on ourselves and change ourselves, become mm -hmm. a better person? And mm -hmm. that's where you're supporting the charity. And that, again, no matter what you've gone through, you're still shining bright and you're a bright star to this world, Liz. And my mm -hmm. advice to you is never change. Because mm -hmm. you're doing such an amazing job. You are indeed, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Cyberbullying, do you find you get a lot of that these days? Well, now I can see the thing is, here's the thing. Um, I say it like this. In the beginning, I was flawed every single day. And you know, I actually had to get up and it was really hard. But because I was shocked, I didn't understand what it was. I didn't understand this evilness, this level. And so that's why I did the haters, the stop the hate, haters are killers. And But then now, I don't care about it at all. It doesn't bother me at all. You know, when I, of course, when I see it, if I see something negative, something stupid, I feel more embarrassed for people now it's than anything else. Yeah. At least, like, so unknowledgeable, you know, I was like, you're, you're so unknowledgeable, you know, it's just ridiculous. So I feel it's pathetic. But because Ben had also committed suicide, you know, and and that was part yeah, of exactly. it. It's, it's all also saving lives. It, it's, it's and I don't care what I don't know what a person's going through. And I've heard a lot of my friends, um, friends have actually taken their own lives due to bullying. Um, mm -hmm. So it is all about stop the bullies and stop yeah. bullying, even on social media or phones. It's time for change, and it's important that we, you know, make this positive change now. Absolutely, make a difference but... in the world and lead the right way forward. There's this now. Yeah, it it is time. So you to also change. Um, support children with cancer. You ran the marathon, didn't you? I did. And you raise a lot of money for children with cancer. You've yes. also set up your princes and princesses to help yeah. children that are terminally ill uh, have yeah. the wonderful opportunity to go into Graceland. It just shows yeah. what, how wonderful you are. Mm -hmm. And also you're arranging now for the um, coach tours to go to Graceland where you actually pick up people and then drop them off. Mm -hmm. And then they, they actually watch films of your dad, Elvis. Well, yeah, the actual fact, let me tell you how that happened. I wanted to do wonderful things for my family. You know, a lot of things when I came home happened, Absolutely. you know. You'll be amazed what happened when I came home to Graceland that my father from heaven helped with, you know. And, of course, I designed 300 miles to Graceland where it was taking people 300 miles to Graceland. And now Graceland actually does tours at Graceland. 
you know, so basically that would way, really help with that idea. 300 miles uh, as well. And you pick people yeah. up those 300 miles and then drop them back again, don't you? Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, but now we haven't done that that 300 mile thing because Graceland changed the program. And they now, what they do is they take people, I'd still like to do the 300 miles. And the reason why is because within 300 miles of where you live, if you've got a museum, you've got something, people don't go there as easy because they're only 300 miles away. So if you say you're going to take them, they will then go. So that's the idea. And we have millions of fans within 300 miles radius of Graceland. We can pick up and bring them to Graceland. And I did a, I did a, you know, an experiment. I asked people from within 300 miles, would you like to, have you been to Graceland? No. Would you like to go? Love to. Why haven't you been? Just haven't thought about it yet. It's close. I've been having it in my mind, but I never got around to it. Well, how long ago did you think about it? 25 years ago. Okay, so if you had a bus to bring you to Graceland, would you go? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'd love to go to Graceland. So I designed 300 miles to Graceland. And then, of course, they came up with different ideas. Then I also wanted to help children. I wanted them to be able to say that they were inspired by Elvis Presley for singing. So lots of them are regardless of that. But I wanted to bring children who didn't know about Elvis Presley as much, believe me, there is some, to Graceland for them to be inspired. And then my mum came up with, you know, along with that kind of that idea as well you know, the Graceland camp, which I was very proud of, you know. And so we kind of inter we we kind of design things together that way. You know, it's kind of interesting. I've got some brilliant ideas, which I believe they're brilliant for Graceland too for the future, which will change will change how people will tour Graceland and give them a much even bigger experience, you know. So you can bring the fans who are Elvis Presley fans and the ones who are not Elvis Presley fans as well. And so many things we're we're working on right now that I, you know that I'm 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 part of for me designing, but not necessarily part of with the executives at Graceland. You know, uh, I design yeah. things myself. You know, have you um, ever got to a stage where you feel a little bit down, and you you taking yourself on a on a self tour around Graceland, just reminiscing? Do you ever find that place? Yeah, uh, when I in 2016, I went home to Graceland to put some roses on my dad's grave and to talk with him. That was the most difficult journey. I didn't even think I'd make it up the driveway. And um, it was a funny thing happened when I went up there. It was raining and I couldn't get the umbrella. It's a brand new umbrella. And I couldn't get the umbrella because it go up and it kept coming down, you know. And um, they was helping me put the flowers on the grave and things like that. And I was allowed to do that before the fans came, which was nice, uh, which was a good moment I spent. But then when I walked down, after I finished talking to with my father, and I walked down to go down towards the gate, you know, the umbrella just went up. <laughs> and I was like, okay, Dad, that was funny, you know? <laughs> you know? It's one of the biggest things that this made you kind of remember and giggle out loud to yourself. What, what comes to mind when you're going around Graceland? What one thing makes that biggest giggle for you? I think a lot of times I'm a ghost at Graceland, you know, because uh, when I go home to Graceland, I have all these feelings of my father and my family and my heart and soul. And I do things at Graceland. I've had meetings at Graceland and things like that. And, uh, but sometimes I'm alone as a ghost at Graceland, walking around Graceland, you know, remembering and, and, and reminiscing all the things about my father and about me that, I've experienced, you know, in my life and, and from my childhood upwards, but a lot of people don't know about. So that was very sad, actually, in the beginning like that. But now I just accept it. You know, I go there sometimes and they've got new staff and uh, they say, what's your name? And I say, Presley. And he says, are you kidding? I says, no, sir. <laughs> it was hilarious one time when I had a meeting at Graceland. You get home, Liz, to Graceland. It must have been so emotional for you because you had many trials and tribulations, didn't you? Mm -hmm. To, yeah. And you were determined to get back to Graceland. So that very first time that you did get back to Graceland and you were home, the very first time where you actually belonged, how did mm. you feel? Well, the, here's the funny thing is, I used to take my, uh, to back up a little bit from that and then give you the experience of that. Here, this is the thing, okay? And I hope my mum is listening to this right now because it's so important that she is, you know, to think of this. When I used to take my daughter looking at houses, you know, before when she was born and stuff like that, we used to go and look at houses on the weekend. I was always looking for this 
beautiful big white house I wanted, you know, and with the lions in the driveway and stuff like that. And it wasn't until I finally saw Grace and I was like, whoa, that's what I had in my head, you know, where'd that come from? Oh. You know, and but it's when I went to Great Plains, is that I'm home at last, and yeah. you know, I can imagine in your mind, well, you, you could see your dad smiling back at you, pleased that you're finally home where you belong. Well, yes, but it's like this you see, it's like that ghost thing because now here I am walking up the driveway, you know, and even though some staff know who I am, they're told to keep quiet and not say anything. So I walk up the driveway and I go and see my dad, and, and I remember last time I used to look over and see if my mum was looking through the window. Oh, bless you. Your mum is a remarkable lady and she does an awful lot of charity work as well, doesn't she? And you did actually go to Liverpool um, and actually saw your mum when she was in Panto, wasn't she? Um, I did. Which was also very emotional for you. Yeah, I bought it. You well, so thing. proud of your mum and also your sister yeah. Lisa Marie, bless you. Yeah. Thank it's you. really wonderful that you can all work together and share these fantastic mm. ideas and take Grace mm. forward in loving memory of your dad. And you're also um, in the midst of doing a song together, aren't you, with Lisa mm. Marie, which is due out at Christmas time, a charity single that you're going to be doing. Yeah. You've got so many things on the go and, and exciting and wonderful opportunities coming in this year. Because it's not been easy with COVID as well, has it? I mean, how have you all been coping at Graceland with COVID? Because obviously people not being able to come and you know, visit Graceland, have they? So have you all coped through the, you know, the pandemic? Well, it's actually been a little bit devastating. Excuse me, I'm crying, but uh, oh, a bit, so okay, it's very That's emotional. So it's very emotional because so now sorry, I'm home. I didn't mean to make you cry. Bless no, so, you know, okay, because now I'm home properly, you see. Oh. In my mind properly, you know, all those things in the past are like the fighting and struggling to be home and to, and mm. to do my job and stuff like that is now kind of... I felt you know? quite emotional as you're talking. It's made me feel emotional because I know what you've gone through. And as I was reading your book, I felt really emotional myself. Yeah, so yeah, easy. yeah. So, so but I'm, I'm excited. You know, I'm excited. I'm excited for. Um, how often? Sorry, I'm I'm really concentrating on because I can't hear. Well, I'm I'm deaf in one ear as it is, and I'm just oh. trying to concentrate what you say. So forgive me if I pull faces and and I kind of reach out to you. How often do you try and get together as a family? and maybe have a meal or a celebration yeah well them? yeah well here's the, the thing is okay i'm gonna explain it to way exactly how it happened uh you know i wanted to have a dinner at graceland with my mum you know i did and uh of course that has not happened at, at graceland yet um because we're a tourist attraction and everything i so they don't even get home because my mum's busy everybody's busy but that's not the real reason the reason is you know you know, even though I'm home at Graceland and I'm doing my job and I'm creating all these things and everything else, we're owned by another company as well. So it's not exactly easy that part, you know. And so I went to dinner with my mum at an event. She was having a um, private event. I've been with my mum three times. And even though it hasn't been like sitting there chatting and hugging her and all that sort of stuff, it's been a very loving experience. You know, it's been, I've been there when I went to, I went to Nashville with my mum, well, she went and I went, you know, to, and, then, and she was doing a celebrity thing and I was just behind the, I was behind the thing, um, being looked after by the security guard. Yeah, by the, by the, yeah, by the body guard, basically. Yeah. So, 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 yeah, yeah, so those things, you yeah, those things. So much as a family as well. Yeah, 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 those experiences were really good because I was there with my mum, you know, even though it wasn't totally close, it still was close from a distance. Like, example, the Very closeness important. I had with my mum in England was a distant kind of a disconnected closeness. But when I went to dinner with my mum in Memphis, Tennessee, in, in the Hilton Hotel, and I sit on another table and she's sitting there, there were so many close moments, and I was so in awe of proud, being proud of her, of, of oh. who she is to connect together, connected sort of thing. And it's, it's very, it was a very emotional, but very proud and wonderful I, moment. I, I can imagine when you hugged your mum for the very first time as well, Liz, how emotional it must have been for both of you. And also your sister as well. I, I haven't, you know, I haven't, I I haven't going back to you, wonderful, but, but. Yeah, I haven't got, so I haven't got to hug you. never, yet. ever given up, no. you know. And I, I, I think you're, you're a true inspiration. I really do, Liz. And, and yeah. you still, shine your light and open your heart and very compassionate to other people and never mm. give up and your faith always keeps you strong also the fact that your dad mm. is very much around you supporting you oh, yes. and granting wishes to the children bless them that are terminally mm. ill and making their dream come true mm. and also the children with cancer 
it, it must be so emotional for you. It makes me feel emotional that children have to suffer so much. But just to see their little eyes light up when they're finally at Graceland. So I know at Christmas time you, you decorate it beautiful. I've never been myself. I would love to go one day. But I've actually seen it yeah. in the Hallmark movies where people got married in the actual movie. Mm -hmm. And it just looks so beautiful. And also at Christmas, I did read that you do decorate your dad's grave, all of you, don't you, with beautiful flowers. Yeah. And you spend a lot of time again making it all beautiful at Christmas for your dad don't you yes and um when I went to you know when I go to Graceland it's always an experience for me and I have to kind of, of course obviously be professional at Graceland and uh but there's this little girl that came up to me one day and she was very she wasn't very well and that's how I designed the Prince and Princesses program for Graceland you know basically when we see somebody who comes to Graceland who's a little child and they have cancer and the parents bring them because they feel that'd be a good experience in which it is. You know, I'd like to, us to be able to give them a little dolly, a little teddy bear, you know, show them that love. And, um, you know, because uh, it's a wonderful thing, you know, when they, when they see these children, their eyes light up, you know, they light up. And so I'd like to be able to do that for them. You know, that's where I come up with the idea for that. It certainly does, Liz. I'd like mm. to talk about Irene because she was also um, a huge mm. influence in your life, wasn't she? Because you finally yes. got your wish that you were able to perform and to, you know, sing and you had some vocal training. Uh, mm. And she actually invited you, didn't she, to sing on her album. And there was like 10 songs and, you, yeah. you know, you spent time together, didn't you? And you also mm -hmm. won an award and she won two awards as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, tell yeah. us a little bit about that time, Liz, in your life. Well, what it was, in actual fact, um, I landed in New York City. Uh, Irene had been a friend of mine. We'd been working on these songs, and she decided to do the album herself eventually, um, which is fair enough, you know, because she wanted to have that credit for that. But we remained friends, and I landed in New York City. And, uh, and of course, I don't try to get anything off anybody. So when I landed in New York City, I had $750 in my pocket. And so I found myself sitting there homeless crying. And so um, I went to a homeless shelter, and um, but and then I said to them, and they said to me, you know, we're sorry, we're closed, you know, and not only that, this is a man shelter, because I had no experience on the homeless shelters, because when I was homeless in England, I didn't go to them, you know, I just stayed with myself on the streets sort of thing, you know, when I was younger. So this is the first time I actually went, because I was older, and I thought, I'm older now, I can't survive out here like I used to be able to. I need to go somewhere and be safe. So I went to the homeless shelter, but they were closed, and um, not closed, but kind of finished for the day and there's just homeless people running around all over the place and they said you know um this is a plus this is a man's one and i said oh okay and they said uh, what's your name and i said uh, this is lane presley and they said elaine presley and i said yeah and, and they said wait here and they ran upstairs and then this lady came down she said come with me she took me upstairs and she says uh okay we're going to give you a place to go tonight and then we're going to sort you out tomorrow morning and everything else of it was fantastic and I remember walking with the bodyguard and he, I was walking with him and he said to me well now he said now you um, got down this low Miss Presley he says you can start thinking about helping other people and I said I stopped in my tracks and looked at him and said sir I've always helped other people and I always will and he goes good and again I think I do believe that he was heaven sent he also found you a chair to sleep in Liz doesn't he it, you yeah. know, and eventually they did give you the money to go to your friends and you stayed with her for a little while and she, she helped well, you well, follow yeah. your dream of singing, didn't she? And you'd perform and record the songs together. Well, I was actually quite amazed been because you hear what's happening. Because that's, that's in your heart, singing was always there, wasn't <clears> it? That it? You know, growing yeah. up. And then yeah, to finally home. get on that stage and perform, it must have been such, you know, an overwhelming, phenomenal emotional experience for you, really. Oh, yeah. Well, here I was to get to that point there. Here I was homeless. And then they offered me I was in the homeless shelter of these girls and everything, you know, and in that girls and we were all having fun and stuff like that. But it's also extremely dangerous. You could understand that. This is in New York City. Very dangerous. And so they offered me to go and stay in this big mansion. And I was like, oh, OK, that sounds great. <laughs> you know, And um from the homeless shelter to a mansion, that sounds brilliant. And they interviewed me and everything and told me the rules. And then Irene called me and said, you're supposed to have come here. I said, I can't. I said, I've got to get myself organized first before I come and see you. And she said, no, you, and I told her the situation. And she said, you're not doing that. You're coming here. So I said to them, I'll, so I can't take.
make your mention <laughs> and and um you. you know and i went to irene and then i went to irene's house but then from irene's house yes i went on stage all over the place and sang and uh and uh was doing that but that, that was a challenge that was actually interesting that was a great part of my life i'll always remember the beginning of going on stage when you're first home at graceland and and people don't believe who you are but then the people who are hiring you to go on stage do you get things like the engineer trying to kill your sound and things like that so here i was on st so here i was on stage right you know and i had like this set of songs i was going to sing and um and i had to you know and i had to um be on there singing these songs and entertaining this audience of about 500 people at the time in chicago and then the sound guy goes oh, i'll destroy this and he turns off the sound so I go from singing you know, one song. <laughs> yeah, I go from singing one song to another. So I just this kind of did bass the natural thing and just jump from one song to another. Whatever he played, or what he didn't play, I just sang a cappella. And when he did play, because what happened? I'll be singing the song, you know, a cappella, and then to the audience, and I was down by the audience singing to them, you know, and suddenly he played Wooden Heart again. So oh, I jumped yeah. up, I jumped it. up and ran across the stage and went, "Can you see? I love you." <laughs> <laughs> and so they all went kind of crazy, and they thought that was planned, but it wasn't okay. planned. So this is oh, sort of thing happened. This is sort of thing that happened to me when I first was out there singing, you know. And then another time, I went to the Aretha Franklin contest on behalf of my family because I went to things to represent my family. I went to Chuck Berry funeral, but when I was at the Aretha Franklin concert, you know. And they were all in. They were all on the stage in Chicago again. You know, they were awesome. Their voices were so yeah, high and incredible. And I was like, I'm never going to be able to compete with this. This is going to be a disaster. Oh. Anyway, so I went on stage, right? And I was like walking on stage. I said, Now this is, you know, Elaine Presley because you know, to be on that, just Elaine was a president at the time. I said, This is Elaine Presley. And so I go on the stage, and um, and I was like, What am I going to do? And as I was walking on stage, I was thinking. I can't sing. If I sing like I do them compared to them with people, I'm gonna be, it's gonna be a disaster, you know? Oh. And um, so I said, okay. So I got on stage and I said, and I stood there and I went, I've got to do something. And I went, and I got on my knees and I said, do you realize this is the feeling my dad had on stage when he was here? I said, <laughs> this group, that's all this. I said, I said, praise the Lord for Rika Franklin, you know, the one of the most credible singers of all time. I said, and one of the things that we appreciate at Graceland, and we're here today from Graceland representing Aretha Franklin. Let's do a candlelight vigil. Oh, well done. That's awesome. <laughs> and so I did a candlelight awesome. vigil. And I was so proud of that because it gave her the respect she deserved. And I didn't yeah. disaster it for Graceland, where everybody's going to laugh at me and go, you need to go back to Graceland and get in the dungeon, you know? And so, and that was really worked for that. And, and I was really proud of that, you know, but well, if, I had yeah. a sang, if I had a sang with the people who can sing the Reef and Franklin songs, it would have been a disaster. You do need to improvise, don't you, when you're on the stage? I mean, I've been on stage, you know, yeah. numerous times performing in musical theatre and singing. And sometimes, yeah. you know, the music will stop and then you, you just got to continue singing. If the music stops or not, if the DJ messes it up, because the show yeah. must go on, mustn't it? Like you say, or someone forgets their lines and you're doing panto and you just quickly, you know, sort of burst out in song or whatever. Because you have to improvise, don't you? But like That's you say, I've lived, don't you? Yeah. You do, but That's it's not lived, it's not always yeah. easy. And people don't realise, mm. you know, before you go on that stage, it's quite daunting, Liz, isn't it? Because you yeah. sort of think, all well, eyes at me, now I'm going on stage and all you're looking at me. Uh, but you step into character, don't you? Because I also do acting as well. And when you, you step into character, you are the actor. Same as singing. You step into that stage yeah. a a actress moment, don't you? And then next mm. minute, it, it, you just be yourself and just perform. You, yeah, um, every, everybody, everybody, you know, whenever I do a show, I always think I'm going to be useless. You know, I never think I'm going to be good. You know, I really do. And I have decided to buy a Gretsch guitar, you know, and um, to go on stage. And I was with, with um, the Leonard Skinner band in Asheville, North Carolina. And I was there and they said, we're going to sing with you and everything. Because, you know, I was just going to sing myself on stage with the guitar for these five or six hundred people. And for World Peace for Animals, and they said, "No, we're going to sing with you. We're going to we're going to play with you. Play. We're going to back you." And I said, "Really? Okay." So they said, "What are we going to do?" And I said, "We're going to do um, that's all right, Mama." And they said, "How does that go?" 
what's the chords to that? And I told him the chords and everything. And then I said, it kind of goes like this. That's all right, no more. That's all right. <laughs> right? And so I had this Gretsch guitar, you know, and they said, like, we kind of got it, guys. And I was like, come on, you're the Leonard Skinner band. You can get us. If we don't sing this sort of music normally, I said, oh, great. Oh. And I said, just do this. Just do. Just make sure you do these three keys and follow me and everything will be great. They said, why don't you follow us? I said, no. I said, I'm not following you guys. That'd be a disaster. I said, you've got to follow me because I'm going to do some crazy stuff. I said, whatever I do, you just do it. So I get on yeah, stage. Right? <laughs> yeah. But I love that. World peace for animals. Being an animal lover myself and I've got two cats. Mm. Mm. I just love that because I've heard of World Peace Healing Day, but World Peace for Animals because, again, especially through the pandemic, some people have yeah. been abandoning their animals on the streets. They you can't know, to keep them. Because like they that. can't afford to keep them. Yeah. And it's just been mm. heartbreaking. I mean, where mm. we are actually in Dorset, mm. there's been a lot of dog snatching, unfortunately, taking mm. place. And it's just been heartbreaking. Mm. But luckily, the police did um, mm. find, I think it was about eight or 900 dogs that were actually snatched. Mm. and return yeah. them back oh. to their owners because again the pets are, are part of your family aren't they so i, I don't know how Absolutely. anyone can be called yeah. to animals so i love the fact of world peace day mm. because it's yes. also reminded people you know mm. to treat animals with love and respect and kindness oh yeah i have four we have um four dogs and four yorkies so have you got yeah. four yorkies have you oh bless um, you. what are their names Liz? yeah it's ridge um page fox um, Ridge, uh, oh, oh, no. Ridge, right. Page, Fox, and Blue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. lovely. Can we um, come forward a little bit in time now? Yeah. Tell us about my mum's a princess. Oh yes. Um, now here's the thing about, about that. that. How did it come about? I said a while back that I'm going to be writing a children's book because I wanted to write a children's book. You know, so I did the serious book and I wanted to write a children's story. And um, and so my mum then she went and she did, went and did the um, Love Me Tender thing, which was really great and inspiring, and it was a beautiful book. That we should get the Love Me Tender as well. And so then I finally got around to doing my book called My Mother Is a Princess. And basically, what it's about it's about me growing up and doing the things about being on the farm, riding my bike, playing, you know, getting blackberries, getting pea picking, and eggs for the you know chickens and things. And then, you know, going sweets from a sweet shop, singing and playing guitar and singing and you know, singing, making up songs and things like that. And then the whole story is my mother is a princess. It goes through the time when I meet my dad and then my dad, you know, passes in the story as well. And the children's book have all things. And um, we get to the very end and I realize, oh, my mother is not a princess. My mother is a queen. And me and Lisa are the princesses. So, I thought, oh, yeah. right. so maybe it's going to be another bit following on from it. Saying you know that your mother's a queen and you and Lisa Marie yeah. are, are the princesses. Have you got yeah. that in the pipeline? Do you think, Liz? Is there a that second is book? that no, yeah. that is at the end, at the very end of that book, because it says my mother's a princess. It goes about where I'm believing my mother's a princess, you know, through my life as we as I do these things, and it gets to the end of the story, and I find out my mum's a queen, and at the end of the story it says, oh, and and Liz and Lisa are the princesses of Graceland. That's what it says. Aww. Has um, Lisa co-wrote with you in anything? Uh, yeah, uh, Graceland. We own Graceland Anthem together, and I will be producing that. Um, it would be nice if Lisa would do it with me, you know, being on us in there with me. But you know, co-writing co things. We own half that song each, and um, 50-50. and like, <laughs> like, like I think she would say, um, I want fifty percent of a hundred percent. Not 50%, it's 25%. <laughs> so, it sounds like you've been bonding quite well with Lisa. Well, and it's a different, no, well, it's not like that. It's um, unfortunately right now, even though it's been all these years later, it's still quite distant, but very close really? as well. So it's not like, it's weird because it's not like with, with the family I was with, that was very, I was very close with them, but very distant. Now with my mum and Lisa, I'm very close to them, but they're distant. I mean, no, I mean, not they're not distant like that. I mean, we're distant miles apart. So, but I'm much closer to Lisa. When I came home, actual fact, to Graceland, people with me have thought this was planned. Lots of things happened that were kind of strange. My sister was living in England, just 50 minutes away from me, and I was heading to Graceland. So she was in England. I was in, I was heading to Graceland. As soon as I got back I to, since I came to, actually, because I thought, how ironic! You finally go home to Graceland. And then Lisa Marie comes over to the UK, doesn't she? Bless her. Yeah. So then, when I'm in Graceland, she comes back to to to, to America. Yeah. <laughs> so I, think, I think maybe you see me in Graceland going, 
that's it. I'm going home to Graceland too. You know, I so don't is know. Is Lisa Marie now back over in America? Is she, bless her? That's right. She's back in America now, yeah. She's she's back in America now, is she? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Now, yeah. also, you, your daughter um, has, you know, followed in your footsteps of stardom. She was a very successful model, wasn't she, your daughter? And yeah, um, she also owns a couple of successful beauty businesses as well, doesn't she? You must be so proud yeah. of Alison. Yeah, she's actually, she sold that now. She lives in Beverly Hills, not too oh, far from... Yeah, she lives not too far from my mum and um, from Lisa. She actually just won an award in England. She she won the award. She, the the actual um, in the in the London Film Festival, um, I can breathe. That was my daughter's production. Yeah, and she's done oh, lots of things. She's worked with my mother's um, director on different things and and helped with those sort of things as well. So my daughter's actually been very active, but she's more kind of in the Beverly Hills world. And I'm kind of more in the Tennessee world. And it's wonderful that you're all there supporting each other because she's also married mm. and she's got children, so you've got grandchildren yeah. as well. And yeah, you're such a, a close little family. And it, it, it's, it's just lovely, isn't it? Yeah, we do, do have we, a close family. Do you have a Christmas, family. Liz, do you, normally? I mean, obviously, with COVID, it, it was difficult last year. Yeah, we do. We've, not this last year, but a couple of years ago, we did get together before the COVID. And that was a lot of fun. That was wonderful and everything That's else. Wonderful. Wonderful. I can imagine. Yeah. Have you got any special plans for this Christmas? Oh, yeah, I was about to say the same thing. I was about to say, <laughs> so have, you, have, you got, have you got, a, 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 other than uh, the harvest time things, have you got a big get together plan, something really big? Big party. Well, they just, well, they just say this. I just say this. Mum, Lisa, Graceland executives, I'd like to come home to Graceland and have dinner with our family at Graceland. How's that going to be? Now they're just laughing their heads off those Graceland executives. <laughs> that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would be my dream to come and do that with you guys. You know, would that be okay? If not, I'm going to arrange to have some of my cousins who are also related to Elvis Presley and my mother come to Graceland for a Graceland dinner. Oh, you that know? sounds. So, 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 yeah, and I'm not saying that towards Graceland meanly, but unfortunately, sometimes it's positive and negative at Graceland for me, and I want to change that all to positiveness. So I figure if I joke about it but, and I don't get too insulted, they might actually have a little bit of a, like, hey, let's give her a little so bit of a So if you could have one wish for Graceland for the future, yeah. what would that mm. be, Liz? Just to be part of Graceland and help build the wonderful things for Graceland and the future of Graceland and the things people are going to be coming to see and doing and uh, representing charities, um, things like that, you know, making things really, you know, being there for my father and our legacy and our family and and people uh, and making things happen at Graceland, you know. Um, I'd like to be a major part. Of, I'd like to be a major part of that in the future, you know. And I have been. As I'm you've sure, been sure that you will, screen. Liz, as well. Because you do support, don't you, actually, your dad's memorial um, trust as well. So it's now actually mm. um, been closed down and they've opened it up, haven't they, in Whitehaven, I read in your book. Well, you it hasn't support been... um, other military people, don't you? Yeah, it hasn't been done. And what we're doing is we're actually rebuilding the Elvis Presley VFW memorial post. And um, it actually was taken away a long time ago, but we took the name and we brought it to Whitehaven. But we haven't been able to do it yet because we've got some prob little problems with the land we've got to sort out. And the COVID, you can't be building and people are dying on your site. We can't have that. And so we haven't got around to it yet because of this COVID thing, but we are working on that. It is in the works for the future, definitely. And I'm also going to be September 11th, I'm going to be representing my family in Memphis, Tennessee this year too. Yourself, have you got a new single or a new album planned for this yeah. year? Yeah, I did um, my Scared Little Child, which is my latest single. And of course, um, I had to really learn about the music business so I can get all my royalties as well. And I've really put together a program for, for that for people as well. And so the next song I'm gonna bring out will be Grace and Anthem. Then I've written a song for my sister. You see, I'd never written a, a, a letter to my sister that's very long and serious. And the reason why is because I can't, I can write, but I have this problem when I write with my hands, I get stressed out. And so I find it very difficult to sit and write. I will kind of, you know, I can't, it's very hard nowadays. So I wrote my sister a song that is a letter and I'm going to be releasing oh, it. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. I should look forward to seeing that on the Billboard 100 maybe. Well, you know, I would love to. <laughs> I would love to have a hit record, you know, um, because that's good. It's obviously a good goal to do. If you like, if a doctor, you want to save all these lives, you know. If you're a singer, you want to have a hit record. Of course, you do. Um, that would be lovely. 
Uh, but it doesn't Bill happen. Billboard 100, that's the one, isn't it? To aim for. Billboard 100, here I come. Yeah. And I shall, I shall look out for it over the next few weeks and months. <laughs> yeah, exactly. there you are. Yeah, if we can do that, if we can get one in the Billboard 100, that'd be great. But then, uh, you know, a lot of people throughout the world have to know me more, you know, and stuff like that. It ma makes me interested to know what would happen if, because uh, obviously I'm out here now doing my thing and everything. If my, um, if Grace Sam would promote me a little bit, how, how things would actually be, you know, because so far things have been quite good. When I've done my foundation work and charity work, I've been received nicely, which is lovely because obviously I'm Jen Ryan. And when I've done my well, record, I, I present, like, um, um, I present yeah. a country show here in England mm -hmm. in a local radio station. And uh, during the country show, I'm often looking at the Billboard 100. Mm. And we, we see that the movement of the artists is so quick. Yeah. You've got so many new artists coming in yeah. and so many coming down. Yeah. It's, it's very quick just movement, isn't it, the Billboard yeah, 100? Just, just get on in a flash. There I am. Quickly take a picture. Show of the world. I've been number one. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Next day, off I go. No, top 100. <laughs> you know? So what are your so, dreams yeah. for the future, Liz, with your music? Where would you like to see yourself in a year's time from today? With your music what I'm, what I'm doing I'm very always improving the quality of what I'm delivering you know constantly improving that and so I want to really do songs I want to do more movies I'm in a movie called chore coming out in 2022 I want to do more movies and I, I love doing movies and I want to do more songs and I want to do more things for great with Graceland and I want to do more things with my family and that's it really I'm a family girl you know so it's it's not about Okay, it's not about Elvis Presley is really big and famous. My everyone, my sister, my mum's really big and famous. Let me kind of live off all that. It's not like that, you know. I have to work hard in order to deliver hard. what I deliver to the world. So it's like my sister's delivering, my mum's delivering, my dad's obviously delivering. I'm delivering, and I have to work hard at the quality of all that all the time, you know. So it's not like I'm just living off your family. It's actually hard work you know being an artist yeah. and trying to deliver something that's good that people want to hear and listen to and, and you write good things and stuff like that so really behind the scenes the whole thing is hard work it's natural for me to be home at Graceland it's natural for me to be like my dad and, it, and my mum too actually and it's natural for me just to be me but you still have to work hard to make things happen it's not just like you're there going oh I'm a this kid love me it doesn't work that way you know no, it doesn't. So what do you do to relax then, Liz? Do you do meditation? I mean, I teach meditation um, to my students. <laughs> do, do you do meditation or anything like that just to sort of zone out and just relax and switch off? I do. I sit, um, I, I do sit down and do a little bit of meditation and um, look out and play with my little doggies and, you know, be with my family and that sort of thing and stuff like that. I'm a big, big family girl. It's so tough. really just you know, my family really more than anything else, to be honest with you. You know, I don't go and out partying and stuff like that because you have to remember being me it's you know when you're out there doing things you're kind of you all the time you know you know it's not like a part-time thing you can't suddenly quit so you know you're out there you're trying to be there for people but I spend a lot of time with my family because every time you're out there are people it's that fame moment and uh and that sometimes can get can get tough you know mm -hmm. So you mentioned earlier that Cliff Richard was also your inspiration as well as your dad's a child growing up. Yeah. Was there any other celebrities that were an inspiration for you in the music yeah. and entertainment industry? Yeah, Bill Haley in the Comets, um, you know, um, Chubby Checker, uh, you know, the... Um, what's it called? Kind of the hillbilly sound, is that right? Um, the hillbilly sound? Yeah, they get you kind of the help with the rock and roll sound as well. Like I also like um, Hermie Herman. Yeah. I would like you know like a different stars. Really. I like I like a lot of artists really. You know because they all have something to deliver that's beautiful. But I was really stuck around with the rock and roll when I was younger. Cliff Richard was very influential in my life when my dad died. Because when my dad died, I was very angry, and so therefore I turned to Cliff Richard because he believed in God, and I decided to follow that path. The actual fact is Cliff Richard that kept me off the streets. You know, well, kept me off drugs on the streets in London when I was very, very first on there. I just thought about how Cliff Richard would be, and I was being like that. And then, of course, I was very lost when my dad died, became even more lost. And it took into 2013 for me to become unlost. So, so yeah, Cliff Richard. Oh, I love Cliff he's Richard. another inspiration to the world, isn't he, Cliff? Because he does amazing work. 
And yeah, he never seems quite at his way. He always looks fantastic, doesn't he? <laughs> when you see him. Uh, and uh, I say he never gives up, does he? Same as Tom Jones. He, he's another inspiration to the world. Yeah. And I believe mm. he's going to be touring again soon, isn't he, Tom? And he's got so a new yeah, he's got, he's, he's the, um, Tom Jones is the oldest person now to have a number one album, I believe. Yeah, well, we've only got one he's thing to say about Tom Jones. Okay. A of weeks. Yeah, well, Tom Jones. Have Cliff you met Sir Tom Jones or Cliff Richard yet? Let me explain to you now. Well, Clifford, I'd love to meet. I haven't met him yet because I've been fighting being home at Gracehaven for all yeah. these years. You know? That might and, happen this year. You never know. Yeah. Teams do come through, isn't they? But Tom Jones, you've got a message for Tom Jones. Tom Jones, yes. stay away from mum. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So how can people get a hold of your books, Liz, um, to actually no. purchase your books, Kid of the King and My Mother's a Princess? Um, yeah, they're actually on Amazon, and uh, you can get a you can get a soft cover, or you can get a digital cover, and it's been released worldwide. Also, some of the major bookstores like Barnes and Noble and things like that, you can also get it from as well. So yes, yeah, and also your songs are on Spotify because I know she sent some um, to me the other day. Are they on all mm. of the musical platforms, Liz? You actually yes. have songs for people to download as well. Yes, and what I've done, of course, obviously, you know, I've gone from Elaine Elizabeth Presley as my stage name, which is my real name to Liz Presley. So I've only just released the um, Scared Little Child because I wanted to kind of get rid of the songs I first did when I first came home because they were crap, <laughs> because of the production so and things like that. It, and now Liz, Liz Presley, now, Liz Presley with perfect music, <laughs> you know? We're looking out for Liz Presley and, and that, that's your stage name? Liz Presley, Liz, yeah. not Elaine? No, no Liz, Presley. Liz Presley. Yeah, Liz Presley, because that's my new level at home at Graceland, you know, new lit, the new image, Liz Presley, instead of Elaine Liz Presley making all these rubbish records, you know, Liz Presley making good records with good covers and good quality photos, <laughs> delivering to the world. Well, you've got a natural talent, Liz, and I, I think it, you've got a fantastic voice. Thank I've you very much. You you've got a fantastic voice and yeah. a stage presence mm -hmm. as well. And I think you're Thank going to inspire you. a lot of people, you know, no matter mm -hmm. what's thrown at them in life, never to give up. But also yeah. the music and the entertainment industry is not an easy path. I mean, I've been mm. in it since a child, off yeah. and on. And, and it, you know, mm. if you don't, if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. So eventually you will reach your destination. And so many yeah. people do give up because there's also a lot of rejection, isn't there, yeah. in the music and entertainment industry? But it's always knowing mm. that you are the key at the end of the day. Mm. And, and, you mm. know, just be yourself and, and mm. find your raw talent and then nurture it. So what advice Absolutely. would you give to somebody, Liz, before um, you know we run out of time, to somebody mm. that wants to embark either down the path of, of singing or becoming an author or, an actor or, even. or even an actor? What advice would you like to give to them, Liz? Okay, I've all, you know, separate the two things, like who I am as a person, a child of Graceland, you know, and, um, and a singer. The two different things. One's my family that you, which is that's who they are, and so I'm proud to be part of my family, which I'd never want to leave. That obviously because it's my real family, and then of course my singing career. So you have to ask yourself. You have to say to yourself, sit down, literally sit down, you know, and say, okay, what do I want to do with my life, right? And if you say I want to be, I really want to try to be a doctor, then go and do that. But if you say to yourself, I want to be a singer and I don't want to do anything else, that's the only thing I want to do in my life, then do that. I'm but if you say you want to be a doctor and try to be a singer, you won't be a singer. Yes. Yeah, go where your heart is. Go where, your we go where your soul is. No yeah, go where your soul is leading you to be. You can express it through your songs, can't you? You can share your life through your songs, which is also can be part of your healing as well and, and heal other people, can't it? Yeah, when I, when I first went to the studio <laughs> and I didn't learn, because I, obviously I wasn't allowed to sing when I was younger, even though I did sing, because I just sung on my own, you know, and because um, I was young and, you know, and, and I was like dancing. Like, like, if all the things my dad does is natural and it's natural what I do too. So I do those natural things and some of the older people loved it on the seaside, you know, imagine doing that, singing rock and roll songs, even though it was terrible. But they did it, you know, they loved it. When I first went into the studio and I sang my songs, you know, and I sing Cliff Richard songs at the time. And um, the producer, I said, what do you think? And he says, uh, he says, <laughs> He says, have you ever thought of having any singing lessons? I said, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? 
He said, you could work on your breathing a little bit, you know. I said, oh, okay. So, <laughs> so off I go, you know, working on my it's breathing. It's all about the diaphragm, Liz, isn't it? You know, because I, I do opera as well, and you've got to take a lot of breath when you sing opera. <laughs> Even more yeah. so than contemporary, isn't it? And it's just expanding that, you know, diaphragm. Because with opera, I have to warm up 10 minutes before I start yeah. to sing a song. Whereas with contemporary, yeah. it's not quite so long, is it, like you say? <laughs> no. But once um... you do, you'd be amazed the sound that comes off of the breath. Because a lot of people will sing the back of the throat and it does affect your nodules you can get nodules in as well yes, and it make it, your, your vocal um cords sort of sound a bit gruffy whereas yeah. you know if you sing correctly and have vocal training you do protect getting nodules on your your throat but you also yeah. strengthen the diaphragm and it expands isn't it yeah that's right yeah and so now i've got it i've got the hang of it now and when i oh, first yeah, did, when I, <laughs> yeah when i first came home you know and i was I went on because basically I, I realized who i was in 2013 and i was like I said, oh my goodness, because I went from having no confidence, right, literally, no confidence and kind of shaking, you know, and being scared all the time. And suddenly, I realized who I was, and I had this confidence. I was like, I'm going to go and sing a song. So I went on stage to sing a song, and I got up, and he said, why do you, always, why do you sound so much like Elvis Presley? I said, because I'm the name Presley, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And that was the time when I was naive, you know, I think I could just come home to Graceland and sing and be happy and be that rock and, and I was really... I'm disciplined now, but I was just a wild rock and roller coming home to Graceland and I was yeah, kicking ass. And um, you know, pardon my language, sorry, mum. And um, the, then I had to learn to calm down because they beat me to a pulp in order to calm down, you know. Oh, bless so, you. But, and you, you know, love rock and roll and you're fantastic at singing rock and roll as well, aren't you? Yeah, and I love going on stage singing to people, you know, to people and everything. And I give them roses in honor of my my mum now as well and my grandma and stuff like that. And Oh. two grandmas and uh and i deliver those to people and uh and support people as well who are not well and things like that so i really truly when i go on stage you know it's about the audience it's about delivering to them something and i get a lot of pleasure out of that you know yeah. i don't get a pleasure out of it's not like i get up in the morning i'm like oh i'm really famous you know i'm gonna i'm so good let me go out there and do my thing no i get a pleasure when somebody smiles and make them happy and i yes. do a good job Mm -hmm. Just like no, that song, what have you done today to make you feel proud? Mm. Isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, when, when, when I was on here and I saw this. Kindness. Yeah, I always, you asked me before, you know, about my appreciation of basically, um, I always appreciate the fact that I'm healthy, touch wood so far, <laughs> drop something, healthy so far. And uh, that's the number one thing, you know, that I've got a great family and I can do what I'm doing. When, just before I got on here, actually, I put a little comment for somebody who was sick, who just had cancer. And put a little comment for them because that was important to me, you know, and uh, some things like that. So when you see me home, you see me on stage singing and doing my thing, I'm there to, for people. I'm there to make them happy. Yeah. Yeah. And you got some wonderful fans as well that support you with all the work that I you do. do that they, that's and not I have one. You know, and the wonderful my dad too, and wonderful friends supporting you. Yeah, my my. Well, let me tell you something. This is interesting. My my. The world works in mysterious ways with my father and everything. So, yes. you know, my cousins, I've got hundreds of cousins as well that I love dearly. Oh, bless you. That are also oh. a kind, of, kind of a protection for me because it's like, you know, they're like, you're not alone for the sound. I say, oh, really? Well, these are all my cousins. <laughs> <laughs> Try telling them that. Well, <laughs> I think definitely a party's in order, isn't it? You know, to get the whole family, all your cousins together and all celebrate. And hopefully yeah, soon it will be the end of COVID. Because it has yeah, that's what I want to do. Addressing you know, people all over the world, especially in yeah, India want, recently mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, I well, want to do that. Unfortunately, we have actually um, sort of run out of time now. Mm -hmm. I could okay. talk to you for hours, and I would love to <laughs> interview you, you again. Like and I, I just hope next time we don't have any problems with the sound. So, so sorry about that. No um, worries. You know, and also to all of our viewers as well. We have had a few problems with the internet mm -hmm. um, here mm -hmm. in Dorset, unfortunately, mm -hmm. and also with the sound. So I just hope that everybody mm -hmm. can hear us and. To be honest, Tony and I are just truly grateful, Liz, that you've allowed us to interview you, um, to hear your remarkable story and everything that you have achieved and continue to achieve and yeah. supporting those to shine bright. Can I also Thank ask you, you Liz, much. is it OK if maybe a few weeks' time we do a follow-up? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely yeah, we can. Yeah. Really interested to see like how, how you're going and things like that. Especially your yeah, music <laughs> I am to get further in my career now, you know, it's the last seven years have been interesting because I had to go through federal investigation for seven years and that was a long, long journey. So I've now got through that. So now I can actually do my job and 
more so and and deliver more to the we world we would love to definitely interview you liz maybe in um june or july i shall keep in contact with you yes. and update you and we'll book you in as i say we'll interview you again but Deborah thank you so Tony. so much thank and you liz. to moino and his lovely wife as well for supporting mm. us with the show and to all of our viewers that have watched and so sorry as i say at the beginning once again we had a few technical um differences but yeah. just hope that you've been able to hear us all for the rest of the show as well. And thank you so, so much, mm -hmm. Liz, um, for this wonderful opportunity. And keep shining bright. Keep doing the amazing work that you're doing. You, you know, you're a remarkable lady. And mm -hmm. I'm blessed to be able to interview you today with Tony. Thank you. And, and thank, thank you so, so much, so much Liz. for having me. Thank and you God for having me. God bless you and your beautiful family as well. And all thank of the amazing you. work that you do. God bless you. God bless you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye thank for you. now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.